Yeah, started. Yeah, Rakesh. Where so to start? Agenda? Where to start? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, asking. We can start with the networking or uh, storage. No. Why you are eh? skipping the sequence? No, I'm, I don't know sequence. That's what I'm telling you. You have first, experience for the taking class. Lab setup. Okay. So hmm. lab setup is done. V center oh, yes. is up and running. The uh -huh. long center. Your cluster mm -hmm. is up and running. Mm -hmm. See, you have everything. Now, next step is Let's understand the basic networking first, and then we'll understand what is VMware networking. These two things we have to cover today. Okay. So, just to demonstrate the basic networking concept, let me take my lab lab environment as an example and explain you in a different way. So, can you tell me what is IP address class? There are four A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D? E. There are e. five classes. Five classes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is class A? What is class B? What is class C? What is class D and E? Uh, there are uh, A, class A, class B, and C for usual, and D is for some. Uh, okay. D and E is for some research kind of things. Okay. A, B, C, D, D and, e. and E. Okay, remove D and E from picture. You said three, we can use it. Now, yes. tell me what is public IP and Private IP. Private IP. What is the difference between these two? Uh, in layman language, we can say if it is a public IP. Public IP is it is, it is reserved for provide from the ISP and the private IP. There are some range defined in every class where any organization can use for internal use. Okay. So then, uh, tell me what is what is routable and non-routable IP? Public will be routable and private will be non-routable. Means if you access something over the internet, that is routable. If you cannot access something over the internet with that IP address or, or the range of IP address, they call it as non routable okay. okay, let's see mm. what is class A range, IP address classes. What is class A range and B range and C range? Images. <coughs> okay. So class A, B, C. I said forget about D and E. D and e. Result of multicasting experimental. So Let's take class A. So basically, two two types of IP address. Okay. Public and private. One is private, and second one is public. So. Same, you call it as routable and non routable. Non -routable. 
That's it. Now, all the IP address, whether it may be a public or a private, divided into three classes, class A, class B, class C. Okay? There are three classes. So what is the class A range? Class A has range 1 to 126. 0 to 126.0. 25255. Right, the same thing. And class B from 128 to 191. 192G. 0 dot 0 dot 223 right so these are the divisions this is class mm. a range this mm. is class b range and mm. this is class c range okay so out of all the ranges so where these private and public are defined these two are defined across all the three classes. Yes, there are some range defined, right? Okay, so in class A, in 10 class dot something, 10.0.0.0 to 10.225.0.0.0 dot 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 Okay, this has been taken out as class A. Five eight. Five eight. private IP okay means this is private range then what is public range 1.1.0 dot one dot zero to nine dot two fifty five dot two fifty five dot two fifty five and eleven dot zero dot zero dot zero to one twenty six dot are public IPs in class A. Agree? So, what is public IP routable? So, let me open simple command line. Ping. Google.com 172.co.uk 172.co.in 172. Let's say Instagram.com 34. See, Instagram.com is pingable. Right? So, if you look at Instagram, 34 is in between. You are 1 to 126 only. 34 series. Okay. And it is not part of any private. Instagram is using this public IP that belongs to class A and routable. That is the reason why you will be able to ping in internet. Clear? Any other example in class A? <coughs> One seventy six dot co dot uk seventy eight dot in fifty two. See Amazon dot in is running on again class A range. Clear on this? <coughs> okay, then what is class B? This is the class b range out of class b range 172.16.0.0 to 172.32.255.255 right hmm. taken out 
as class private. is private set right so then what is the range 128.0.0.0 to 172.0.0.0 15.255.255 and 172.33.0.02.191.255.255 are public IPs in class. Um, B. B, right? Mm -hmm. This part is clear. So, what are the examples on this? You will see google.co.in 172.217. Right? Amazon.com. Sorry, .co uk 178. This is also part of class B. And Amazon.com also running here. Also, Google.com. Right? Google.com is also running on the same IP range. Almost like same IP range. Anything else? Let's say in Facebook.com 157. This is also same, right? Class B only. So, any confusion on this? No. Okay. Now, out of class C, 192, 168, 0.02, 192.168.255.255. Private purpose. Right? This is class C private purpose. Now, 192.0.0.02, 192.167.255.255, and 192.169.0.02, 223.255.255. Are public IPs in RC. Right? So, any examples which are running on class C? Thing 98. It is on class 8. Thing Amazon.in. Oh, not okay. oh. What else? Nothing. Oops, yeah. Any, any class C example? LinkedIn. 34. 
Anything else? Let me check what I explained to other students rather than spending too much time on this. I wear the glasses. Go daddy. Very simple. So ping. Go daddy dot com. Do not eat. Right? Do not eat. On this range, right? Classy. Public IP only. GoDaddy.com. Now, which private IP address you will use very frequently? If it is, if it is. Enterprise level, you will use class A. If it is small and mid enterprises, you will use class B. Home purpose, you will use class C. Agree or disagree on this? Akesh, mm. this, part, this part is clear? Yeah, yeah, already clear. Now, tell me what is VLAN? What is subnet? Uh, These things I don't think required, but before that, let me explain my lab setup so that you'll understand something. I need to discuss further on the <coughs> IP addresses. Okay, so I have one system, and also I have one Cisco switch, and I have my laptop. Also, I do have Wi Fi router. Uh, how the connectivity is? It is connected like this. It is connected like this. It is connected to internet right and one cable I've connected to laptop as well so let's understand the IP addresses 192 168 1.149 okay for this 192 168 1.151 and for this, for this Cisco switch, 192.168.1.100. And for Wi-Fi routers, 192.168.1.1. Now, tell me, from my laptop, from my laptop, ping 192.168.1.151. So it is pinging from here to here. How the data is traveling? Can you explain? <clears throat> it's in the same VLAN. That's what it's. Uh, it's in same VLAN. It's what is VLAN? VLAN is nothing but it's a LAN segregation. So grouping of land, you can say. 
virtually you are defined in the switch. What is VLAN? What is this virtual? This is what they are telling. Yes. Okay. So yes. it is VLAN is simply a grouping plan of some devices in your right mm. so what i did in this picture I have, I have grouped all my devices into one VLAN called VLAN 1 and the group range is and I'll type one here. Okay. Let me type here. So in my lab VLAN 1 is a one which I have created by default and the group range is 192, 192 168, 0 dot, sorry, 1 dot, 0 2, 192, 168, 1 dot, 1 dot, 255. 255. Total how many? 256 IPs. 254 is uh, 254 IP will be usable, I think. Okay, no, normally, totally 256 yeah, IPs. Totally it's 256, but usable is 254. Okay, so out of 256, 0 and 255 are gone. So you can use 254 IPs. Okay, so for every group, for VLAN is a simply a group of some devices in your organization. In this VLAN, 254 I devices you can have means it is this VLAN is group of 254 systems out of 254 systems one must be gateway okay what is gateway They are explaining something. Mm. Fine. Okay. We will explain in our way. So, gateway is a junction point where all the data will meet and decide where to go. Is it clear? Mm. So, I said for this VLAN, I have mentioned 192. 168 1 dot 100 is gateway so means this is my gateway in this picture where is my gateway this is my gateway so how to access the gateway 192 168 1 dot 100 this is just login this is my switch and if you go to VLAN management, VLAN default VLAN ID is one. So my default VLAN ID is one, and default gateway is hundred. Default gateway is hundred. Now go to VLAN settings. One VLAN which is default. And rest all VLANs are manually created by me. I can create a number of VLANs. Mm. Okay, but first VLAN is this, and this is the range, and the gateway is this. Now, 
when gateway will come into picture and when gateway will not come into picture let's understand let's say source is 192 168 141 my laptop to destination is uh, when we will have a different kind of device then you will need the gateway if you have same kind of my device then it's not ESX okay my ESX right source is this and destination is this in this case if you ping from here from my laptop to esxi host it is pinging but if you mm. run the trace rt to this ip it will directly It, there's no hop mm. it's directly communicated means what is happening so you have your source you have your destination also you have your data this is a packet construction source destination and actual data right so when this packet is broadcasted what is the range of broadcasting what is the range of broadcasting 192 168 1.02 or let's say 1.12 192 168 1.254 so in between all these ips this packet will be broadcasted what is the source this what is the destination this so if source is sending some data to destination the packet is broadcasting across the right ips across the ips is that destination is discoverable or not this ip is in between these ips or not mm -hmm. right if it is in between these ranges <coughs> then it will automatically receive the packet and send acknowledgement back to source right so if you are sending any data within the vlan this is the vlan range so if you are sending any data within the vlan gateway will not function gateway will sit ideal agree or disagree mm right but in this case no gateway let's say for example your source is 192 168 1.149 again that is my laptop to so destination is 192 168 40.40 v center right as we look at the v center is up and running sir okay from my laptop ping 192 168 40.40 .40. it is also pinging mm. right now if you trace route 192 168 40 dot 40 you should get gateway in between there must be one hop one dot one and one dot hundred and then destination destination good so my data is traveling via wi-fi route that is the reason why it is showing as 1.1 .1. three hops let me explain 
okay in this second scenario what is happening there is vlan 1 also there is vlan 40 right vlan 1 is there vlan 40 is there where i have created i have created in my switch vlan 40 is also there okay now what is the vlan ip range 192, 162, 1.1, 2, 192, 168, 1.254. But, boss, what is the gateway? What is the gateway? 192, 168, 1.100. And what is the IP? What is the sender? 192. 168 1.149 is the sender okay now here what is the range 192 168 40.1 192.168 40.254 in between there is a ip called 192.168 40 40.40 is the destination now source is this Okay, source is this and destination is destination is this. How it will travel? So first it will broadcast from 1 to 254. Okay, is your source and destination are matching in the same region? No, right? No, right? So in this case, your Wi-Fi router will pick. In my case, Wi-Fi router is there in between. So request will be sent to Wi-Fi router. And Wi-Fi router cannot send anywhere. So it is again sent back to my switch. My switch has gateway configured for VLAN 40. This is a gateway in this range, right? Where it is defined in switch. So, this gateway will send to another gateway in VLAN 40. This is the gateway in VLAN 40. Where I have defined, let me show you. Go back. VLAN IP configurations. See, for VLAN 1, 100 is gateway. For VLAN 40, 1 is gateway. For everything, 111 is gateway. So, your gateway on this VLAN is this, and your gateway on this VLAN is this. If you take 192.168.40.1, it is also same switch. It will open again same switch portal only okay so when you are sending a packet from 149 it goes to wi-fi router and come back to switch switch will pick and hand over to another gateway this gateway it, it will again broadcast between all of them 1 to 254 it will again broadcast then 40 will pick that packet this is mine and it will send acknowledgement back to gateway gateway will send it to gateway and gateway will send it to wi-fi router and wi-fi router will send it to source then the data transfer is complete is this clear or any confusion rajesh able to understand or not yeah understanding okay so what it is need gateway in second scenario this is clear mm. now these things these things we discussed in 
physical condition. Okay, these things, physical cable is there, physical cable, physical cable, everything is physical cable here. Now, in this case, let me show you something. This is ESXA server and there is one VM called 40 and this is another VM called some other IP. Okay. So this one is 192.168.40.40 and 192.168.40.41. 192, 160.40.42 and so on, right? Three things are there. Now, from my laptop, ping 192, 168.1.151, working 40.40, working 40.41, working 40.42, working 43, working. So, whenever I ping, from my laptop, all the four IPs are working. So if you imagine the data is traveling, the data is traveling from here to here, and it came like this, it came to here. So the path is clear. Once it reaches here, one, two, three, four different IPs, but your box is only one box. Now, once it reaches here, how it will behave? How it will come to know I should go to here or I should go to here or I should go to here or I should go to here itself. You getting my, my point? Mm. So, in this case, in this case, what will happen? Let's say, for example, the data is traveling from here to here. Now, once it reaches here, it can decide whether it can send like this or whether it can send like this or whether it can send there is another cable to another laptop. It will switch will decide. Once it reaches here, it will decide where I need to send. Agree? Mm. This is this is switch in your physical world. Similarly, in your virtual world, there is a concept called virtual switch. So, whenever you build a ESXA server, you will get one virtual switch by default. Okay. So we'll go into more technical discussion on this later, but let's understand this switch you call it as vSphere standard switch, right? vSphere standard switch. So you need to understand by default when you install ESXi host one switch will be deployed called as SPF standard switch and it contains two components okay one is kernel port and one is vm port groups right so vm sorry vm where kernel port What is VMware kernel? VMware kernel is 
like operating system developed by VMware, the kernel is no, it is not. It is kernel OS kernel, not the let's see. What is VM kernel port? Not vSphere host. Fine. So let me explain in our way. So it consists of remember the you call it as vSphere standard switch. It consists of two components. One you call it as kernel port. Another one you call it as VM port groups. Okay. So what is the significance of both? Let's say, for example, if the data is reached here, you have two options. Either host can respond back or one of the VMs can respond back to the request. So it will connect to like this and like this. So kernel port will always hold, remember, kernel port will always hold the IP address which you have allocated 151, sorry, okay? So kernel port will always hold the IP address of host and port groups, you have to create it manually, but by default, you will have one port group. So all the VMs are connected to that particular port group. You can create multiple port groups. So port groups will be used for virtual machine communication and kernel port will be used for host communication. Host communication. If host want to send some data, so let's say ping 192.168.1.151. Now I'm getting the response. Now who is responding back to me? Kernel port. Now, I'll ping 40.40. .40. Now, who is responding back to me? Virtual machine is responding back to me, but via VM port group. Via VM port group. Let me show you these things. Go to my ESXi host 151 networking. You will see vSphere standard switch. vSphere standard switch. It consists of two components, two components, virtual machine port group, port group, port group, port group, port group, but VM kernel port. So VM kernel port or kernel port, whatever you call it as, it has the IP. VM kernel port management network 192.168.1.151. The same IP is showing here. So kernel port is one component and port groups is another component. You can have multiple port groups. So that is the reason why port group, port group, port group, and multiple port groups are showing up. So everything will be sended across to physical server via one cable only, like this. You understand this? Or you want me to explain in a different way? So in this case, <coughs> VM kernel port is to respond back for host request. Agree? And VM port groups will be used to manage virtual machine traffic via different VLANs, VLAN mappings. This part is clear? You understand what I'm saying? Or, mm. 
you have any confusion on it okay same same thing same thing in our lab you have three esxi servers you can see the same thing click on 41 41 is main host imagine one host and if you go to configure if you go to configure let me minimize these things for some time so that we can view few things Okay, let me minimize this as well. Now, visible. So, if you go to any host and networking, virtual switches, click on virtual switch, we switch zero. We switch zero. It has two components. One is kernel port, another one is port group both are connected and sending data via one cable and every kernel port has ip every kernel port has ip you check any host you can check any host the configuration is same same VM network is for virtual machine port groups. This you call it as port groups, and this you call it as kernel port. Check other host. It is also same. But remember the first class when I explained the first class when I explained. Let me take you to the first class what I have explained. Imagine you have one physical host on the back side, you will see four network cables one, two, management, and one zero one zero one this is serial leave about these two you have two production cables connected like this okay i said there is a pca slot here there is a pca slot here you can remove these two and you can insert one network panel or additional nic cards for your environment how many nic cards that you can insert on any physical server you can have up to 16 NIC cards based on your requirement. Here in this case, you have only two, but in production, you can have up to 16. Okay, so in this, in, in today's case, what we will do, let's imagine, let's imagine, I have one ESXi server connected to one switch via two cables we have two cables and this has one switch switch has two components kernel port and port group now both of them connected like this okay both of them connected like this this you call it as 0 and this you call it as 1. How to check? Let me show you. This, if you go to VMNIC 0, 0. Go to physical adapters. You will see two cables, but only one is used, one is unused. So, can I do one thing? It is actually like this. Okay. So, can I do one thing? It is actually like this. What I will do is same host, same two cables connected to imagine ideally 
it should connect with two different switches in real time switch one and switch two it's fine so leave leave this part we'll, we are we are concentrated on internal aspect so what i will do i will make small changes here this is switch v switch swi vch and i forget the spelling switch zero v switch zero right if you look at virtual switches v switch zero okay so this is also v switch zero but i want to keep only kernel port here and connect like this and i want to create one more switch here and connect like this okay this i will call it as port group okay now i have few vms all the vms are connected to here here also i have two vms both the vms are connected to here only but in this case in this case i have my laptop here if i connect my laptop here if i ping if i ping host on vm if i ping host and vm from here data will go if i ping host data will go like this if i ping vm data will go like this right there is no difference but if you look at this scenario i have same laptop connected here via like this okay or it treat this as only one switch now for example okay via like this if i ping host if i ping host who will respond kernel so if i ping host data will go like this and it will go via this cable 0 and 1 if i ping vm this these two are vms right if i ping vm data will go like this right you know the difference between these two for kernel or for host traffic one cable and for production traffic or virtual machine traffic one different cable okay ideally you should have two and two cables for each we'll discuss that in tomorrow's session but for now let me create this setup very quickly then we'll, we can stop it so let me go to this pair client add one more switch now i want to use as virtual machine port group not as a kernel port right fine i want to create a new switch add adapter which one available next and i'll say vlan 10 vlan 10 id we'll explain all these things later tomorrow for now just remember the separate switch is created v switch 1 is created and it has only port groups to send the data out in this picture this port group is no use i'll simply remove it okay now switch 0 only kernel sending data via one cable switch 1 switch 1 only port group sending data via different cable switch 0 and this you call it as v switch 1 You understand any confusion or any questions? Hmm? Rakesh? Hmm? Clear so far or any confusion? Any questions? Anything you want to read re define or you want to repeat? Hmm. Rajesh, are you able to understand? Yeah, no. Yeah. 
if this part is clear then we'll stop here for today tomorrow we'll continue with a couple of other things so for tomorrow discussion make sure you are able to understand few questions here what is access port and what is trunk port okay what is l2 switch what is l3 switch right how to configure ha in networking high availability in networking right not the vmware ha it's just a network ha network high availability right these things we will cover in tomorrow's session clear hmm. also we need to test couple of things we need to test standard networking and then we should discuss distributed networking so those things we'll discuss in next coming few sessions right so let me stop here we'll continue tomorrow same time